I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell are changes you're going to have a task. Wonder why the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to have a nice picture. So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. What better place to talk about punishment than the edge of a cliff, or that's our favorite cameraman. <laughs> Never mind, I got a little distracted there for a moment. Or as our favorite camera, oh, I'm gonna come back to that joke. Um, and it's gonna be one of those ones that's only for you old behavior analysts. So I'll just warn you right now, I'm full of complete vinegar this morning, um, or afternoon. You figure out where we're at and where the sun position is on my face and you can figure out what time it is. So anyway, uh, I won't punish you for that, I promise. So we left you off with the, uh, the last video being about introduction to punishment, so we're going to continue on with a little bit about punishers here. And let's start off with a dog collar, because, oh well, just because the topic comes up a lot, right? So I'm not saying I'm for them, I'm not saying I'm against them, we could get into all that, but that's another time. So anyway, the point being that dog collars, uh, you know, the shock collar, right, the electrical collar, the e-collar, as some people say, to make it sound cooler, right? So um, e-collars can uh, deliver a mild uh, stimulus, right, a punisher, right? So they can. They don't have to. They can do other things, too. We'll leave it at that, maybe, because I'll probably add to it later. Anyway, you get the point. So they can deliver a shock, right? So that serves as a punisher. Well, what you worry about, one of the things you worry about with punishment is that things, that punishment becomes discriminated. You down with SDP? You get my phone number. So there's that. Yeah, you know me. I'm down with SDP. Um, so a discriminative stimulus that's punishing, right? So some authors use that term. I really like that term. We use the SDP piece. Um, I think it's important to remember that punishers um, are discriminated. So meaning that you learn what's going to be punishing, or you learn that a punishment procedure is in place in a context, right? So back to the dog example. You've got this shock collar on the dog, and they learn that doing something is going to get punished while that collar's on. The moment you take the collar off, they often will continue with that behavior. Um, same thing is present with like a teacher or um, a parent or something like that. Is what If you're the person delivering the punisher, you become a discriminated stimulus, right? So a, discriminate, uh, a discriminative stimulus, sorry, uh, for that punishment procedure. And that's, uh, you want to worry about that. So punishment um, is an effective tool, but it's, it creates a discrimination issue as well. So uh, let's see, what else do we want to talk about with regard to punishment? Oh, recovery from punishment. Uh, punishment's best thought of as suppression, right? So you kind of, every time I describe punishment, I tend to push down, right? It's like, I'm going to push down on that behavior. I'm going to reduce that behavior. I'm going to hold it in place as long as the contingency is there. As long as that punishing contingency is there, the behavior is going to stay low, right? So it's going to reduce. Um, when you then remove that contingency, the behavior can pop back up. Now, there is research to say that if you punish with enough intensity straight off and you give nice, I mean nice, that's probably not the right term, but you give an effective punisher and you reduce behavior to zero, it's entirely possible that the behavior will stay at zero because the organism might not try the behavior again and consequently, they won't find out that the punishment procedure has been removed. So there is some research on that. You can look that up. Um, so you can you can use punishment get to, to get behavior to a zero rate. Um, I just I, I like other tools, right? I, I like other things to, to um, it's in com combination with punishment. And I think the field as a whole has. Um, I mean, we've used punishment. We know about it. We know it's effective, um, but we do like to use reinforcement pretty heavily. And in the context of punishment, using reinforcement is super important because, like I've said in other videos, that if you're going to reduce a behavior, you better teach the behavior that you want. So you teach a replacement behavior. You teach a target behavior as well. So um, I'm trying to think if there's any, was there anything else? Recovery? Uh, oh, yeah. Gosh, a whole section. Um, two other types of punishers. One would be... Oh, let's see, oh, actually, uh, punishment split into two types here. So, so we're going to talk about conditioned punishers and unconditioned punishers. Unconditioned punishers are straight up, they're, they're unconditioned stimuli, so you don't have to learn anything about them. Shock is an unconditioned punisher. Nauseating smells, like the stuff that you use to, uh, like ammonia, that type of thing, those are unconditioned punishers. You have no experience, you don't have to have experience with those to learn that those are bad. Uh, or bad, sorry, that's the wrong term. To, to, 
to be to learn about the aversiveness, so to speak. It's natural, okay? Uh, probably falling off this cliff would be an unconditioned punisher. I don't think that would be, I think the pain and all that stuff would be just kind of, I don't think I'd have to learn anything about that. I think it would just happen. I'm done with you, you know? It's like, I would die, it's not that big of a cliff, but uh, from their perspective, it probably looks huge. Um, so let's see what else. Oh, conditioned punishers, that's just what happens when you pair a stimulus with a punisher, right? Um, so, no! <laughs> uh, parents do this all the time. That's hot! All right? Um, no! And they say the word no, it's not, that's hot! And then the kid goes, ah, right, anyway, and they grab the stove. All right, so they burn their fingers or whatever. You learn that that no <laughs> is a pretty strong conditioned punisher. That's going to reduce whatever behavior is working on. No! And then it could be followed by all sorts of punishment. Maybe verbal, maybe spankings. You know, I'm not encouraging that. I'm just saying that those are examples, right? So you develop conditioned punishers through experience by pairing neutral stimuli with something else, with a punishing stimulus, right? Um, so conditioned punishers are very useful. Um, a lot of verbal stuff is conditioned punishers. Uh, and I, I don't know what else. I, Gosh, we covered. We're gonna come back in another video and talk more about uh, the pitfalls of punishment, which is a great video game for those of you that are old enough. Since we're talking about old stuff like OPP and and, and pitfall, I mean, why not? It's just an old theme today, I guess. So anyway, um, we'll talk to you soon and come back and talk more about the, some of the other stuff that goes along with punishment. See ya. Woof.